Gambling, gambling harm reduction amendment bill, second reading. To Ura Flavel. Tenoka, Mr. Speaker, I move that the gambling, gambling harm reduction okay. amendment bill be now read a second time. Mr. Speaker, I cannot come to this debate without remembering the passionate uh, advocacy of the late Maureen Waka, who inspired me to focus on the issue of problem gambling as one of the greatest social hazards impacting on our communities. Maureen. Moi, moi e koe. Mr Speaker, this bill was born out of a desire to minimise the harm of gambling on vulnerable communities as well as ensuring the returns from gambling remained in the communities from which the money was generated. First and foremost, gambling-related harm is detrimental to wellbeing, the economic outlook and the community health of far too many New Zealanders. The Māori Party stepped up to that challenge and this bill is the result. So we do not have the luxury of sitting back and waiting for a better day. We know that problem gambling severely compromises the potential of whānau, and we must act now. When gambling gets out of control, sir, it's not just an individual uh, who loses. Whole whānau and communities suffer. Problem gambling has devastating consequences on individuals and whānau. Those consequences can be demonstrated in relationship breakdown, uh, financial ruin, psychological distress, criminal offending, imprisonment and suicide. So why then did the Māori Party take up this call? Sir, over 20 years ago, the first, very first gambling uh, prevalence study in New Zealand identified that Māori had at least three times the risk of problem gambling of non-Māori. In the early 1990s, through the provision of the gambling telephone helpline and gambling counselling services, it was identified uh, that Māori, and in particular, Māori women were increasingly, increasingly seeking help with problems of gambling. Our rangatahi are also not spared the impact of this addiction. Māori youth are six times more likely to develop gambling problems than non-Māori youth. All in all, sir, the glaring reality of these statistics prompted us to commit to a goal, shared widely in the problem gambling sector, that is to prevent and minimise gambling harm. So I make these preliminary comments because I want to make it quite clear where our motivation for addressing problem gambling comes from. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Mr Speaker, when this bill was introduced in September 2010, its, purposes were, its purpose was very clear, to provide local communities with more power to determine where poker machines may be sited and in how, and in how the proceeds can be distributed. Almost three years down the track, I believe that that vision of a gambling-free future will be strengthened by the initiatives advanced in this bill, including the, mention, the, sorry, including the intention to, one, cut rorts and conflicts of interest out of the gambling sector, to introduce harm minimisation devices which can now be done through regulations, to have a minimum amount returned to the community where the gambling occurred, which can now be done again through regulations, and to get pokies out of low socioeconomic communities. Now venues will be able to transfer out of these areas where supported by the community and the council. Mr Speaker, the original bill wanted to cut out racing and, and racing, racing stake money as an authorised charitable purpose. The government disagreed, saying that it would have too much of a negative impact on the racing industry. That's a fight, sir, that will continue at another time. The original bill had a condition that at least 80% of the funds derived from Class 4 gambling would be distributed to the community from which it came. The government supported the idea of making sure funds from pokies went back into their communities of origin and the bill now enables this to happen through regula regulation. The original bill required territorial authorities to take control of distributing uh, proceeds from gambling. The government agreed that there needs to be greater transparency of the current grant system, taking away the risk of rorts and dodgy dealings, and this will be a part of a future work program. Mr Speaker, the original bill allowed for public sentiment and evidence of harm to be a specific criteria when territorial, territorial authorities are developing their venue policies, and for that to be a reason for reducing the number of poker machines in that area. The government disagreed uh, with uh, this approach, but they wanted to instead allow venues, with the permission from territorial authorities, to move their poker machines out of harm's way. 
and the original bill, sir, wanted harm minimisation devices to be put into gambling machines like pre-commit cards and player tracking systems. The government has now supported the development of regulations to support the implementation of harm minimisation technology. Mr Speaker, let me be the first in this second reading debate to state the obvious. So the, the bill that we were, are debating here today is far less impressive than my original intent. That's right, there's no denying that. Hands are up, guilty. I do, however, want to acknowledge my thanks to Graham Ramsey and the Problem Gambling Foundation and indeed the mighty advocacy of the People Before Pokies campaign who have championed the cause of reducing uh, gambling harm so clearly and in such a compelling way. In doing so, I want to also recognise the incredible impact of the experience, the advice and the wisdom from right across the mutu. The Commerce Committee, sir, advise, um, apparently considered 5,000 submissions from interest groups uh, and individuals and another 30,000 form submissions. They also heard around 150, 960 submissions at hearings in Wellington, Christchurch and Auckland. Even if nothing else, the level of public participation has truly been awesome and this parliament is better for their contribution. So I know that this bill does not live up to the ideal that we all had, but I've chosen not to walk away. My approach to political reform is to chisel away bit by bit, to persevere, to do the work necessary to achieve change, no matter how incremental. Te rāpē he paku paku, he paku paku nō te namu, Ingari kotono wero e kawe. As we say, even the smallest of the, mos the smallest mosquito can have an impact. So I wasn't about to pull out of the, uh, pull out on those communities who desperately need change, and to turn my back on the whānau who have come to me in need. So I started working with the Minister of Internal Affairs, the Honourable Chris Tremaine, on how to advance the many issues that my bill sought to address, and I mihi to him today for his genuine commitment to working together to reform the legislation. The result, well, it's a broad package of class four gambling reforms that are given further strength within the uh, regulatory and, and legislative reforms proposed by the government. The changes announced by Minister Tremaine are a direct result of my bill, which was the catalyst for change. We placed the issue on the agenda and this wider package is the result of our hard work. Where we, had, where we had achieved board agreement, we made changes, and I'm pleased we have. I've been able to negotiate a series of changes that lift the percentage return to the community, that address conflicts of interest and rorts, and that will ensure gambling proceeds are, distribu are distributed in the areas raised. These changes, sir, are important reforms that were not on the radar until my bill came along. Perhaps one of the most significant impacts of this bill is that it has created the public climate for urgency in addressing problem gambling. In this sense, a new bill to be introduced later in the year by the Minister and the regulatory ch ch changes uh, that have arisen out of my bill are important signals of, of an appetite for change. And if I had the right to reply to all of those who have chosen to public with, publicly withdraw their support from the bill, I would urge first that they look at the wider package and, that the, and the eight new measures that have arisen provoked by the impact of the Gambling Harm Reduction Bill. Mr Speaker, the key drivers of my bill were to address rorts and conflict of interest and concerns around gambling-related harm, both of which have been addressed. But we're always clear that a wider strategy was required, including broader legislative reform and a public education program. Mr Speaker, just to bring us back to the context of this bill, every day New Zealanders lose $5.5 million on gambling. That is around $2 billion every year. Should we ignore that reality? Should we walk away from this bill on principle? The Māori Party says no. More than 18,000 New Zealanders are problem gamblers, and of course none of these individuals operate in isolation. Almost 3% of the New Zealand adults, close to 90,000 people, have experienced problems due to someone's gambling in a previous year. Should we gamble on their future, wish them good luck and walk away because we weren't able to achieve what we wanted with this bill? Sir, the Māori Party says no. We're in this for our whānau and communities. We're not bowing out. We are counting on, we are continuing the tough fight. We have gained some ground. That, that's what you achieve when you sit down at the table. Tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou katoa. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Uh, Speaker. Jonathan Young. Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, pleased to stand and speak on this.